drink now touches every social activity. We have pub theatre, pub cabaret, and discotheques in which 50 pence worth of chicken in a basket buys you a license to drink till two in the morning. There are now a staggering 50 or 60 thousand alcoholics in this country. The medical profession says that out of every 100 people drinking in a pub, five already are or will become alcoholics. And the bill is enormous. Five million pounds for psychiatric and physical treatment. Six million pounds lost in time in industry. But what is drink actually doing inside us? Dr. Dermot Walsh. Well, what's happened uh, inside them is more specifically what has really happened with inside their heads. And inside their heads, this alcohol has percolated and invaded their cells, their brain cells, and interfered with uh, basic chemical processes such as the exchange of oxygen within the brain cell and the sugar within the brain cell, and in a complicated way um, has uh, impaired the functions of these cells so that they are operating less well than they did before the poison, because that would, that's what alcohol is essentially, began to eat into the cell's biochemical processes. Well, in, in the area of physical damage, what are the risks that we're all running? Um, if you drink too much uh, over too long a period, you gradually damage irreparably, beyond the point of, um, of repair or coming back, um, vital brain cells. And so your capacity to, to remember, uh, to make reasoned judgments, to make intellectual decisions, um, becomes more and more impaired. And this process can go on to such an extent that all your higher brain centres are totally knocked out and you may become, in extreme cases, totally without memory, totally unable to make any decisions or even to think in a human way. You are, as we say, in fact, a vegetable, a human vegetable. But that's a long process and extends over many years. But unfortunately, it happens far too often and there are many of these people in our psychiatric hospitals. And in the other functions of the body? Yes, um, the liver particularly is damaged by alcohol. And uh, again, if one is drinking too much for too long, um, one may um, suffer vital liver damage again, irreparable, and die of liver failure. There are something of the order of two to 300 uh, deaths per annum in this country of cirrhosis of the liver, because that's what that end state is called. Also, one may damage one's, um, uh, one's circulatory system, that is to say, one's heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people die of... Um, heart failure because of um, excessive drinking over the years. And lastly, um, there is an undoubted and um, irrefutable uh, risk of increased um, mortality from cancer, particularly from cancers of those parts of the body that are exposed to the um, raw alcohol, that is to say cancer of the gullet, um, cancer of the stomach and cancer of the bowel. Mortality rates are considerably increased for heavy drinkers from these causes of death over non-drinkers. So, given those disturbing and irrefutable facts of human misery, should we be promoting, should we be advertising alcohol to the extent to which we do? It's certainly uh, commercially essential. The social factors of advertising, of course, are another question, and... Uh, we're concerned about these as we are, we're as concerned about the social abuses of drink as well as we are about the advantages of drinking. It's a, this is an age-old problem and everybody who makes any kind of drink has a, both a sense of responsibility and a concern about it. Um, there are drink problems every place in the world as we know, but it's, it's not drink makes problems, it's people make problems. It's people abuse drink, drink doesn't abuse people. The... Um, we certainly in this company, and I believe all other distillers and all other uh, manufacturers of any kind of drink, deplore the social adversities that occur from the abuse of drink. But, um, were we all to cease making whiskey or whatever other products we make in the, in the world today, it wouldn't cure, it wouldn't cure this, the social abuses that people commit with drink, unfortunately. But when you say you're concerned about it, what do you do about it? Well, we, um, we control our advertising, for example. Uh, we're subscribers, voluntary subscribers to a code of good advertising practice and uh, are very concerned about advertising. Uh, I, in fact, myself and have just an issue on my desk at the moment about an advertisement, one of our advertisements which I object to and which I have had withdrawn. We keep a very strong eye on this. We don't advertise to young people in a blatant sense. 
And of course, as you probably know, we don't uh, use the most effective medium of the whole lot. We don't advertise on television. But the campaign goes on in cinemas, newspapers, and on posters. And some people feel that the thrust of that campaign is too much directed at susceptible young people who can be sold an image of themselves as mature sophisticates drinking the hard stuff.